Hello, mate. Well, I've got two points. Uh, one's ifs and buts, and one's shoulda, woulda, couldas. Let's start with the ifs <laughs> and the buts. The ifs and the buts is, if Paul Tierney has said something wrong, then he should be consequenced. If he hasn't, then maybe Jürgen Klopp should be. But the PGMOL know that that's not going to get released. So they're just going to say, oh, no, he, he's fine. But let's talk about shoulda, woulda, couldas. Shoulda, woulda, couldas. Diego Jota should have got sent off. Okay, it was a, it was a high boot. It was dangerous. Um, um, poor Oliver Skip. Hopefully he's okay. However, first half, he could have got sent off for his challenge on Diaz. So, you know, you can look at it that way. We both know that if that was VAR, you know, um, that they wouldn't have overturned it. Right. Now, right. let's talk previous to that and the, and the problems to why Jurgen Klopp says that Paul Tierney's got a problem with Liverpool. So, in 2021, we played Aston Villa <laughs> and we won the game 2 0. Right. Now, Jurgen Klopp questioned Paul Tierney on a decision and he said, I missed it. Get over it. He's been quoted to say, I missed it. Get over it. Quoted now, by who? I, I, quoted by who, Nick? Uh, it was in an article I read this morning because I wanted to I wanted to get a bit of facts behind what I was saying, but you know what? I, I can't remember the article that I read. But if you uh, use a uh, a web searcher and, and search uh, Paul Tierney... This is all getting very forensic. But here's the deal, Nick. <laughs> if, 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 if Klopp is right in what he says about Tierney... And Klopp has said, what Tierney said to me when he gave me the yellow card is not okay. I will not say anything. The PGMOL have got audio saying, no, everything was above board. Tierney did nothing wrong. Do you think we should hear the audio? Yeah, definitely. But they know that it won't be released so that they can tell a little lie like that. Um, I, I, I don't. I really don't think that Klopp would lie about that. But, um, you know, if maybe, maybe he knows that it won't get released as well. So, you know, you can look at it at devil's advocate from both sides. Okay, Nick, well, listen, de decent enough call. Thank you for that. Here's Ben, another Liverpool fan. Where do you stand in this, Ben? I'm astounded to be So, good morning, lads. Morning. I appreciate being on the show. Simon, I agree with almost everything you say, literally. But there's been a few things recently, and this is one of them where I'm on the other side of the spectrum. So, uh, first of all, I agree, Klopp should be punished for going up to the fourth official. That's a separate sort of issue, but anything to do with officiating and people going up, in-game, out-of-game, after-game, should be punished, without question. Paul Turney has refereed 21% of Liverpool's Premier League games this season. That is an astonishing fact. Exceedingly high, and if I'm correct, is the only team to do so. A single referee having that much influence over the team's games during the course of a campaign is unheard wow. of. And some of those decisions that happen in those games because I don't want to say instead it's biased, but we can take a myriad of Premier League games over the last couple of seasons, whether it's title deciders, Premier Leagues, uh, relegation battles, whatever it may be, and his decisions that all teams will disagree with. Yeah. But all teams decisions in our games leave nothing but confusion and this anger afterwards, which infuriates onto Twitter. But Ben, let me just let me just specify one of the incidents. Yeah. Jota's challenge on Skip. Yeah. Ryan Mason says at the end that he was very angry that Jota was still on the pitch after the skip challenge and that Jota scored the winning goal. Does he have yeah. a point? Yes and no. So I argued with Keith Hackett yesterday on Twitter about this. So the, the problem with both of those decisions yesterday is consistency because I believe neither, in my opinion, are a red card because I believe both are accidental. But I've recently, sadly, read the IFAB rules. And within those rules, it is clear that both of those situations endangered both of the opponents. So it's difficult to say, yes, Josh should have been sent off, because he probably should, even though it wasn't vicious, if you get my point. But at the same time, Skip, even though he touched the ball, endangered Diaz. So it doesn't take one to remove the other, but at the same time, both incidents don't happen if the consistency from the referee is on point. And that's the issue. Do you and have any sympathy with the officials in, at all, Ben? In the jobs sorry, that they that do. Then. Do you have any sympathy with the officials in terms I because I think of the tough jobs them, that they do? The PGMOL 
and not releasing, not just yesterday, but once we move into this position where referees are either mic'd up or certain portions of a game, whether it's red cards, goals, whatever, and then for the fans, so we can hear what's being said, and in incidents, especially that involve managers, especially, not especially heated managers, but Klopp is very heated, once he gets into these situations, if that's released, it just dissipates all of this arguing between rival clubs, between me and Key Packet, between you guys on the radio. Yeah, that's what we need. Ben's right. That's, that's what we need, Simon. Release the audio. Yeah, we also need managers to behave themselves. <clears throat> We also need managers to accept situations. I don't really understand. Yeah, you said earlier that you, you know you would want your manager to own the technical. Yeah, area. no, I'm talking about the competition between dugouts. I'm not talking about the competition where you can go and bar, you know berate a fourth official that's got nothing to do with the on-field decision making because that's what you think is your shtick and it gives you some extra juice with the fans that are watching you do it. <laughs> and I don't understand the relevance of how many games he's refereed because that's not his choice. He didn't put his hand up every single week to referee Liverpool. That's the allocation that they get. And do you sometimes nothing, nothing look at the fourth, do, with do you sometimes think the fourth official should just be removed? I think the fourth well, official should be able to send managers off. But what are they there in for? What are they, all, what are they honestly there for? And what <laughs> what, good point, what implication do they make? So is it so that the manager can just you know vent Berate his them, vent yeah. his anger and then boom, if he goes over check, the top, is he check your studs, don't they? And do the I time. Have no idea what he does. I mean, it's just interesting that Ben made some. Um, Interesting points. You said about twenty-one percent of the games have been refereed by Paul Turney. That that seems a hell of a yeah, lot but, of games. But, but that's that's match allocation, and that must mean that the PGMOL, despite yeah. Jurgen Klopp's we'll protestations, yeah. believe he's a good referee because otherwise he wouldn't be refereeing these sort of games. Because Liverpool are one of the top echelons of teams that will get picked for games with referees in mind. I suspect. But I think the Jota head. Is, I mean, he's gone for his head. That's got to be far worse, isn't it? Than but then, the skip but, challenge but then you can't argue bias, can you? Because he supported no. Liverpool in that decision. So Correct. when the decision goes your way, then Pure Turney will be just fire someone that's in the background. When it goes against you, he's biased towards Liverpool. It's, I mean, it's, it's Martin, a wrong settle this for us. When you were at Arsenal, when the, t- the, 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 the officials had announced, did you sit in a dressing room and go, oh, we'll get nothing today then? It's him. Uh, there was one or two, I must say. And I, and yeah, but I, was that I, paranoia? What, was it paranoia? I don't know. Sometimes it can feel like fact. Um, I don't want to name Mike Riley, really. But, <laughs> but there were occasions when I stopped playing. When I, I when I stopped playing, and I thought, I'm not sure, really. And I can't. It can't be. But look, they are professionals. <laughs> but it, your mind can go that way because you just feel. We had a referee that, that came. We had a referee that came to Arsenal. Uh, I can't even remember his name, so I'm not going to give you it. And he was having treatment. He did a cruise ship. And Arsene Wenger said, Gary, don't let him into the club because he's going to look around the training ground. He sees the Ferraris. He sees all the, the way we live. And there will be some envy. And I'll tell you now, when he's refereeing a game, it could go against us. What happened? That referee, he, did, he officiated a game. The first game, he gave a penalty against us. And you see the boss looking at Gary saying, I told you. So human nature sometimes comes into things. I think things. you've just defined paranoia for us perfectly. No, I'm telling you what... And that you was like a scene from so, Dad's Army. So you don't, don't tell them your name, Pike. I'm just telling you, I'm being honest like Jürgen. I'm telling you how it is. Sometimes you bring people into the fold and they see too much and then they, they, it goes against you. That might be human nature. It might be paranoia. Well, you, you take you, the choice. Do you, do you think then that referees aren't aware of the fact that you guys, guys get paid far more money than you should do? Of course and they're ultimately aware of it. get Of course, so they're always aware of it. So they don't need, they don't need it to be embodied. I mean, yeah. you can just get referees like Uriah Rennie that weren't very, very good. Exactly. I, I just think it happens occasionally. Quick, I, think, I, the I think we've got good referees now, professionally referees. It's just they're not always c- catching things in the moment. I mean making mistakes. Yeah, I mean we were relying, bias, on VAR, we're relying on VAR far too much. Okay. And the referee officiating actually match days needs to improve, but we've got a new tranche of referees. We've talked about that, haven't we? We've lost a lot of referees, the new ones now. That Maybe way. behavior needs to improve. Well, it certainly does. And that's that is the key to all of this, isn't it? Behavior around the referees. Yeah. From the players. And we shouldn't confuse bad behavior with passion. And we often do. Correct. Like yesterday. So running to the fourth official and celebrating in the face of the official, but number two, Klopp implied bias afterwards. He says, I don't understand it. In England, nobody has to clarify these situations. It's really tricky and hard to understand. What he said, this is Paul Tini, the referee, to me when he gave me the yellow card, is not okay. I won't say anything. But then he said more after that. But the PGMOL are saying this morning, we can confirm Tierney acted in a professional manager throughout, including when issuing the caution to the Liverpool manager. Therefore, we strongly refute any suggestion that Tierney's actions were improper. And the PGMOL say that we've fully reviewed the audio of what Tierney said. Well, if if you've reviewed it, let's hear it. Do referees, as a matter of course in other countries, deal with issues after the game then? 
They don't, don't do they? So. so what's that babbling drivel then? Uh, in England, they don't have to speak. So do they speak in Germany then? Do they speak in Italy? Do they speak in Spain? Do they speak in France? So what's that got to do with in England then? No, but there, there is a look at Howard Webb changing this in the future. Isn't yes, it? but so his yeah. point was, in England, they don't have to speak. Well, they don't have to speak anywhere in the world mm, correct. because they're not afforded that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so Howard Webb, if you're listening this morning, and I know you are on most mornings, if you've got the audio, let's hear it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.